welcome to midweek service. I mid hope. Yes, he's excited. I'm excited too. I hope you're excited for our midweek service. God has a word for us on tonight. Get your notepad, get your Bible, share Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Get ready for a word tonight. You ready? Oh, yeah. Get ready. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you were blessed last week when you joined us for that Wednesday service. I tell you, I am having such an amazing time this fast few weeks sharing the word of God with you. And I hope you are also uh, doing the same. All right. Hopefully when I get to meet you in person, you can tell me a testimony. Give me some, some feedback about how you are just flowing in the grace of God, how you're beginning to appreciate what Jesus Christ wants to personally do into your life. You know, um, I, I was sharing with them this past uh, Friday or maybe two Fridays ago when we were, we were in prayer that Jesus, Jesus Christ said that when the Holy Spirit comes, he will lead you into all truth. And when you read the verse right above of that in the book of Corinthians, by the way, Jesus Christ said, I was, willing, I, I was willing to tell you so many things, but you just couldn't handle it. So some, sometimes the restriction to what we know about the word of God is our own capacity. And uh, I, I, I was telling them as well that over the past month, if you've been following us online, I, I am doing everything I can to make you understand that God is even far bigger than what you think. God is bigger far, far bigger than what you think. He is omnipresent and he can take any form that he wants so that you can get closer to him, okay? He is a shepherd, he is a lion, he is the lion, he is, he is, he is, he, he came like a dove. I mean, there, there's so many things, okay? And, and I just hope that you are not gonna put God into a cookie cutter box and think he's this thing that only speaks to you in a specific way. God is the God of the universe, and he is an amazing God that if you give him a chance, will reveal himself to you in a very dynamic way. So last week, uh, I started with John chapter 1, verse uh, 17. And as a matter of fact, uh, if you don't mind, maybe I should just go to John chapter 1, verse 17 to lay the foundation of what we're going to do, all right? And I'm going to read that from the King James Version, all right? And then when we get done... Uh, we'll get into this new Bible that I was telling you that I just received. I, I'm really enjoying this thing. Miss Vicky, if you're watching, thank you so much. You're a blessing. Uh, Miss Betty, thank you so much because I know you brought it over. And, and I'm so grateful for what you guys have done for this new Bible. But anyway, he says in John chapter 1, verse 17, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. <clears throat> now, last week, I spent most of the time talking about truth. And the whole pillar of what I shared with you last week was that his word is truth. And I shared with you how in the book of Psalms, David caught that revelation that you cannot just live by bread alone, but you also live by the word of God. And David talked about how the word of God will cleanse his ways. And now he was a stranger in the earth, so he needed the word to basically see his ways. And I hope you understood that clearly. The word of God doesn't get old. It just doesn't. So if you live for the next 50 years, some of the stories and some of the things that you're going to hear will probably be the same stories, but you'll get a better emphasis and understanding on what is based on what is going on in your life. All right. So let's talk about grace today. All right. Very, very important. I want us to talk about grace today and, and then tie into something. So I'm reading from 2 Timothy chapter 2 and, and I'm reading from verse 1. Once again, this is the Mirror Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Please hear this. It says, Timothy, my son, grace is the source of your strength. Grace is the source of your strength. So remember, Jesus Christ revealed what? Truth and grace. Truth and grace. And as much as you're pursuing the truth, May you, may you understand that the grace of God is the source of your strength. It is your help in time of need. We can read Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 here in a minute. But grace is the source of your strength. It is so much more than a doctrine. Grace is more than a doctrine. 
there are manifold graces of God. It is the person of Jesus Christ. He embodies what grace will reveal. Listen, let me tell you about some of the graces that are in my personal life. All right? Maybe grace number one. God has blessed me with a great wife. Okay? My wife supports me. She allows me to do ministry. And that is by the grace of God. All right? Another grace that I enjoy is maybe I have a good job. And by the grace of God, you know what? I'm able to provide for my family. That is the grace of God. Another grace of God is, you know what? My business is successful. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people who maybe their businesses go through hard times. But by the grace of God, maybe my business is thriving. Another grace is that maybe I'm not sick. It is the grace of God that maybe I'm not sick and I'm, I'm somewhere and I can't even get up to do anything. But by the grace of God, I can walk and I can feed myself. Okay, so there's the manifold grace of God. I was talking to a very man, a great man of God in our city that I love so much who is, who is really teaching me a lot. I love this man of God. All right, and he said, you know what? Avin, I my, myself, I am not the most educated, smartest person out there. But he said, by the grace of God, I have four children. Three are doctors. And one is doing some amazing architectural degree in one of the Ivy Leagues in the United States. He said, it takes grace that for somebody like me who was not educated and went to school, that guess what? I, I still have children who are smart and they are education minded. It is the grace of God. So the grace of God manifests itself in so many ways. And I pray that as long as you are solid in the truth, because the foundation is the word of God. If the grace of God abounds in you and you don't have a strong foundation in the word, if you don't take care, you become prideful. But since we are taught well at SRM and you feed on good word, when the grace of God comes, I know you'll be humble to understand that everything that you have is because you want to give God back the glory. Somebody say amen. So he says, it is so much more than doctrine. It is the person of Jesus Christ and he embodies what grace reveals. Hallelujah. Now, in the Bible, right, I, I, I want you to understand something. That bad things to happen to good people as well I, I i'm not i'm not i'm not gonna kid myself and, and and act like when you're a christian right only only good things happen and there's no bad things that will happen in your life you know those funny things that sometimes you hear bad things can happen to good people right and it's just it's just a fact of life so what i want to do is i want to show you something in ecclesiastes chapter 9 and, and help you and, and help you with something here so ecclesiastes chapter 9 says in verse, uh, let's go from verse 10 to 12. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Then it goes on to say, for there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave where thou goest. So he's saying, whatever you're going to do on this earth, do it. Because when you get into eternity, you won't get that shot anymore. Now, listen to verse, verse 11. This is, very, this is very, very, very important. All right? Uh, last year, we talked about the determinants and how life just happens. But I want you to understand something. He says, I returned and saw under the sun. And ladies and gentlemen, you are under the sun. I, I, I don't look at the sun under my feet. Every time I want to see the sun, I have to look up. So when he says under the sun, he's talking about those of us who are inhabitants of this earth. You're one of them. All right? You're a stranger on the earth. This is not your permanence, but at least at some point you dwell here on earth. And he says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift. So in this life, it's good to be what? Quick, to have pace, to have speed. Nor the battle, what? To the strong. So in this world, it's very good when you have strength. All right, the mighty, the mighty, you have to be mighty, powerful. You have to be strong in what you're doing. Then he goes, neither yet bread to the wise. Wisdom. Okay, those who maybe have gone to school and have studied a lot of degrees. All right, nor yet riches to men of understanding, people who get things. Nor yet favor to men of skill. Skill. But time and chance happeneth to them all. Now, I want you to understand something. 
that time and chance happeneth to them all that he's talking about is not necessarily a good thing. Let me break it down again. Under the earth, under the sun, the race is not to the swift, which means it's not all the time that when you're quick, you're necessarily going to win the race because chance, things just happen. And you might miss your window. You know, unfortunately, there's the Olympic trials going on and we're about to start the Tokyo Games. And there's this American lady who won the 100 meters and is about to go into the Olympics to represent the United States. And unfortunately, it's, it's all over the news, you've heard it, where unfortunately, you know, I think there's been some drug situation, marijuana situation, and she, she won, she, she's the fastest person in this world. Everything is set. But unfortunately, a circumstance is going on right now which might jeopardize her chance to go actually run the race that she's been training for all her life to win this gold medal. What happened? It, it, it's unfortunate. And I hope it's resolved, but you understand where I'm going, all right? Or you think about sometimes, you know what? You, you know we watch these Olympics. It's coming up, and you're expecting somebody to win the race. And then on that day, all of a sudden, you know what? They get a muscle pull, and then they can't run the race anymore. We've seen false starts, people getting disqualified, okay? It's not always the quick one who sometimes wins the race. Then we talk about the battle to the strong. We're talking about people that you know are going to win the fight, the battle. On that day, something goes wrong and you know what? Ah, it just didn't work out. You know, everybody expects that this team that is strong is going to win. But then on that day, surprisingly, something happens and they just don't win the, they just don't win the fight. All right? Then it goes on to say, nor yet bread to the wise. So think about it this way. You maybe you know somebody who is educated and they have all the degrees that you can imagine. But for some reason, it feels like maybe they can't get a breakthrough. So there's a lot of wisdom, but it just seems like nothing is breaking. All right? So all of a sudden, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of what understanding. You think about sometimes, you know what, some of these sports guys or somebody you might know, they weren't necessarily educated, but their skills has brought them to the point where they have fame and they have all this money. And somebody who spent so much time burning the midnight light oil studying doesn't necessarily reach that status. You know, it's not evil, but you're like, man, is this really fair? You know, ch chances, just, just chances. Maybe you graduate from college and when you came out, there was a huge recession. So you were just not able to get employment. You know, things like that. All right. No, yet riches to men of understanding. No, yet favor to men of skill. Favor to men of skill. It happens all the time. You know, it's amazing that sometimes when you're watching TV, it's almost like the prophetic message of the gospel is being fulfilled with your own eyes, but you don't necessarily recognize it. One of the hardest things to do is to recognize that which is said in the Bible playing out in your face. This is that which was spoken of. All right? This stuff that I'm talking about happens in life all the time. You see where it says, nor yet favor to men of skill? Let me tell you something. I watch this show sometimes where they have these musical people who all can sing, Oh, they are gifted. They can sing better than me. And you know that for them to get on this show, they really have the skill to sing. But then you know what? They're all, the, the person is singing their heart out. You can tell that this person is really singing their heart out. And for some reason, which I can't fathom because I'm not in the musical world, these guys will not hit their buttons to let the chair turn around so they say, hey, you can be on my team or whatever. On that specific day, maybe favor just didn't happen. So, nor yet favor to men of skill. The chair just didn't turn around for you. Okay? Because time and chance came in there and what happened to them all. I think you know what I'm talking about in life. Now, let's go to verse 12. The Bible says, For man also knoweth not his time, as the fishes that are taken in an evil net, and as the birds that are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. Listen, when you're dealing with a situation where you have the speed, you have the strength, 
you have the wisdom, you have the understanding, you have the skill, but it looks like time and chance is not giving you a break. Listen, there is only one thing that you need in this world, and that is where the grace of God comes in. The grace is that unexplained help, that unexplained assistance, that unexplained favor that just finds you in your despair and just says, you know what, I got you. That is the grace. So it's very amazing because Paul said something in the Bible which was critical. He said, you know what, for by the grace of God, I am who I am. It is by the grace of God. And I shared with you, if you remember, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, that grace is the source of your strength. Ladies and gentlemen, you just need grace. Oh, I need, I need grace in my life. I believe you would agree with me that you need grace, the grace of Jesus Christ. So when we say those things, usually after sermons, after a pastor preaches, listen, it, 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 it should be a prayer. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. The Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but by also the word of God. May the grace of God fall upon you. It is by grace that maybe you didn't make that left turn, right? At that specific moment, somebody else made that right turn. And then all of a sudden you hear of a bad, unfortunate accident that happened. How is it that you were not caught up in it? It is maybe because of grace. You just never know. This is not in any way, shape, or form to say that others don't have the grace. But all I'm saying is this, okay? That when you go through life and things that seem unexplainable are just happening and happening. All I'm saying is just throw your hands up in the air and say, God, I am trusting your word and I just need your grace to fall upon me so that I may what? I may succeed. It takes grace. It takes what? Grace. It takes what? Grace. The Bible itself said that in the days of Elijah, there were so many widows who were in Israel. But the grace of God found this woman who was not even an Israelite and showed her grace. And she had what? The child. That is what happened. It just took grace. 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 Now, look at Hebrews chapter 9 and let's go to verse 2. All right? The Bible says, All things come alike to all. All things come alike to all. All things. Bad things. Good things. Unfortunate things. Amazing things. All things come alike to all. I am not exempt from troubles. I am not exempt from issues. You are not exempt from troubles. You are not exempt from issues. Your parents have issues. Your friends have issues. Even the president has issues. Listen, everybody, all things come alike to all what? Men. The Bible says in 9 verse 2, there is one event to the righteous and to the wicked. The same thing that is happening to the righteous man is the same thing that can also happen to what? The wicked. To the good and to the clean and to the unclean. To him that sacrificeth and to him that sacrificeth not. One event, but it's going directly to the person who is sacrificing, the person who is not. The person who is good, the person who is not good. It, it just happens, okay? As is the good, so is the sinner. And he that sweareth as he that feareth what? An oath. He is basically saying there, you know what? Life happens. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live. And after that, they go to what? The dead. Listen, you need grace for it is the grace of God that when all things are happening to you, you see, the Bible says that all things work together for what? For good. So when we think about something good that is happening in somebody's life, it is not only one component. It's an encompassing. 
sitting here right now may be ministering to you. You might probably think, you know what, Alvin got it made or something and this guy, whatever, whatever, whatever. I thank God for his grace. But listen to me. There are bad things that have happened, good things that have happened, unfortunate things that have happened, things that are very fortunate, things that are amazing that have all contributed all those things all those things leading to maybe the good that you see sitting here right now but the thing that was able to sustain me was this thing that i call what grace and i am praying that right now you understand that jesus is saying the source the source the grace is the source of your strength and if you feel like you need more of that grace more of that gift you simply have to do one thing and that is to just what ask that is to just what ask he said ask and you shall what you shall receive so remember life happens life happens so when you feel like you have all the qualifications and life is still not happening in your domain, you just need what? Grace. Now, let's prove that by going to Hebrews chapter 4, one of my favorite, my favorite Bible verses, okay? So let me just go to Hebrews here real quick, all right? And it's Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. And I tell you, this is my new Bible. I'm really loving it. It is the mirror Bible, okay? Now, listen to what the Bible says in, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, all right? Check this out. This version says, for this reason, we can approach the authoritative throne of grace with bold utterance. We can come before the throne of grace, authoritative throne of grace with a bold utterance. We can say something when we come to God. Simply, God, I have the speed, I have the strength, I have the wisdom, I have the understanding. Okay, but why is it that time and chance seems to be negating me? God, I need what? Your grace. That is where the authority is. All right. So he says, we are welcome there in his embrace. Ah, ah, ah. We are welcome there in his embrace and are reinforced with immediate effect in times of what? Trouble. Should I read that again? He says, we are welcome there in his embrace and are reinforced with immediate effect in times of trouble. Grace. So if you're listening to me right now, I want you to understand something. You believe in the truth. May you participate in the grace. May that be your portion. You pursue Bible said, covet spiritual gifts. Covet spiritual gifts in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. Listen, grace is a gift. So may you covet after the grace of God so that when these things that I shared with you in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 is happening, the grace of God will supersede that. It takes grace. There's a man in your Bible, all right? And I go back to this man because he is one of our forefathers. And you could see that grace was actually working on him. All right. So why don't we go to First Samuel chapter 17. And then uh, we'll read something about this, 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 this boy. I'm going to say a boy now because he was a boy at this stage in his life. Okay. Now, let me give you a scenario. Okay. So you understand it for those of us who maybe don't know the scripture. All right. Here is a king. His name is Saul. And Saul has a problem. <laughs> Remember that thing I said, time and chance? Saul has a problem. There's this guy called Goliath who would not leave the people of Israel alone. And Goliath, Goliath is basically threatening to just annihilate the, uh, the, the, the army of Israel. So we have this boy. He's like 17 years old. Listen to this. If you want to compare capacity, okay, uh, 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 um. let, let, let's go into scripture. Second Timothy, first Samuel chapter 17, verse 33 and watch what happens. Okay. So, 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 so da David says, I'm going to go fight Goliath. I'm going to take him on. Right. And the Bible says in first Samuel chapter 17, verse 33, and Saul said to David, thou art not able to fight, to go against this Philistine, to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. In that statement alone, I believe what Saul was trying to say, okay, David, I understand your zeal. I understand your desire. But Goliath is older than you. 
experience. Goliath has been fighting, if you read the Bible, a man of war from his youth, so he is stronger. Goliath has been fighting for a long time, so he probably has more what? Skill. He has experience. He's had enough time as a warrior. He is very skillful and he is strong and he has ridden through the ranks of the Philistine army. I mean, this guy is just powerful. All that David had was what? Zeal, desire, and pretty much the guy could just throw a rock. Now, let's be honest. You have the benefit of history, but if you were standing on the battlefield that day and you were a betting man and you had to bet the odds of who will win that battle on that day between David and Goliath, who would you choose? Just, just be honest. Who would you choose? But you know what? The source of David's strength was what? Grace. And on that day, David found meaningful grace. And because of the grace that was upon his life, guess what? He was able to win the battle. He was able to win the battle. Now, now, listen, listen. There was Saul. There was a man even there called Jonathan, who was Saul's son. There, there was Joab. There, there, there were all sorts of people who were standing on the battlefield that day. And when they looked at the circumstance, they just didn't feel like they could do anything. But here comes this 17-year-old boy, and because of grace, he felt like he could do something about what? About that situation. So listen, maybe you're going through life right now and you feel like, you know what? I am, I am just down. You're going through life and you're just thinking to myself, you know what? I don't have any advantage. All the odds are against me. Maybe you've lost a loved one and, 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 and there's so much, okay, that is against you. But if you can tap into the grace of God, which is your strength, it can begin to turn the tide. I didn't say life what didn't happen. If you know the story of David well, you know very well that this guy, life happened. I mean, the odds were not right. But because he trusted in truth and had grace, you know what? Things began to turn around. Grace. All I'm saying is what? Is, is, is you need what? You need, you, you, you need grace. So I pray that in the name of Jesus, as you're hearing me, okay, you will passionately, as you are fasting and you are in your own private time in prayer, seek this thing. You need it. I never said it is the grace of Pastor Alvin. Yeah, I never said it is the grace of your best friend. You may be able to participate in my grace. It's biblical. But who is going to be the best person that you should get grace from? It is from God. And all these fathers of the faith, as much as they believed in God, they had grace. Whenever Abraham felt himself in a bind, the grace of God will carry him through. When Joseph will find himself in a bind, the grace of God will carry him through. Grace is essential on your work and on your walk under the sun. You need the grace of God. So as you're listening to me, please don't let that be something that you just reject. You need it. Remember, all things work for good. Good is not one component. It encompasses a lot of things. And may grace be your portion. Hallelujah. May grace be your portion. So let's read it again in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. For this reason, we can approach the authoritative throne of grace with bold utterance. We are welcomed there in his embrace and are reinforced with immediate effect in times of trouble. I dare you, you're doing your best and you look at chance and time not happening in your favor. Depend on the grace of God. It will work out for you. If God can do what he's done with my life, I believe that God can do anything with anybody's life. You just need to be sincere and you just need to trust that he's a God-given, he's a, he's a promise-keeping God and he'll do what he said that he will do. All right? So listen to me. I've been sharing with you so many things. I really believe that I've done some good preaching over the past few weeks. And uh, I've shared with you that you shouldn't limit the God to what? To, 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 to your, your view of who he is kind of thing, okay? Let him just be God. Expound your horizon on who God is. All right? Let him have his grace upon your life. 
very very important you should let his grace just rain upon your life all right be like a strong summer storm shower that is falling upon your territory and you'll be blessed in an amazing way all right so i'm going to sign off here okay i believe i've said a lot of things and uh, you're probably pondering on, on on a lot of the things that i have i have shared with you all right so thank you for joining us if you want to be a blessing to this ministry which i know a lot of you want to you can text the amount that you want to give to 84321 and god will bless you all right so we'll see you next time when we talk about the power of god the word of god and we learn the manifold riches of the kingdom of god together thank you for joining us i love you i cherish you and we'll see you next time listen maybe before i sign off there's somebody listening to me who has not really given their life to christ you know you need to give your life to christ what do you have to lose you have nothing to lose except hell right i guess right you 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 gain the kingdom we are strangers on this earth so i want to pray with you so that you accept jesus christ if you haven't all right and why don't we just do that father and just repeat after me father in heaven i thank you so much for your word you are a better promise for my life and i pray right now that your salvation which you died on the cross for for my salvation i pray that the gift of your salvation will be fully utilized by me so i commit my spirit my soul my body before you and i say lord i accept you as my personal savior reveal your truth and reveal your grace unveil it in my life so that i walk in your ways in jesus name somebody say amen so thank you for joining me and if you want to give once again you can text to 84321 and god will bless you See you next time. I love you dearly. Bye-bye. Wow, what an amazing word that we have just heard. Listen, thank you for joining us. Uh, please remember what the word has been said. Let it meditate in your spirit, and we will see you next week. Same time, same place. Don't forget to share Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. What she said.